Hello, it's Mike McLean, and welcome to my YouTube channel, where every week I give out the best tips in the business on how to make money and save money renting out Section 8 properties. Hello everyone, it's Mike McLean from the Section 8 Bible, the greatest book ever written for Section 8 Landlords. Alright guys, make sure you pay close attention today because I'm going to be giving out a tip and a technique that Nick and I have been using over the past 25 years that has saved us hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, if you only own a couple properties, I guarantee you this tip and technique will save you a couple thousand dollars anyway. All right, before I get into this tip and technique, let me talk to you about amenities in a Section 8 rental property, all right? And this whole thing's going to gel together, I promise you that, all right? Now, amenity is something like a refrigerator, a washer, dryer, and a dishwasher, things like that. If you leave them in your property, Section 8 will pay you a little extra money on them, all right? Uh, let's say you leave a refrigerator, Section 8 might give you $10 extra a month for that. A dishwasher, they'll give you $10 for that. Uh, the washer and dryer hookup, they'll leave you maybe give you $20 extra a month in your rent for that. All right. But what it really ends up at the end of the day is a big fat zero, if not negative, for you. And I'm going to tell you why. All right. Let's say you leave a refrigerator in your Section 8 property. All right. Three months down the line, the refrigerator stops working. The tenant's going to pick the phone up and say, hey, Mike, you got to get over here and fix this refrigerator. So let's say uh, the refrigerator is totally shot and your appliance guy cannot get it working. That means you got to put out $500 for a new refrigerator, and that's going to wipe out any profits on a refrigerator for five years at least, okay? Now let's say your appliance guy is able to get it working. He's going to charge you $110 to come over and maybe $50 for the part, which again, ruins your whole profit for at least one year on a refrigerator. And washer and dryers are the same exact thing. A dryer, it's always the belt. A washer, it's always the pump. You're always spending and spending when it comes to these amenities on the appliances. And you're always, and trust me, you are always going to end up in the red. So whatever you do, do not leave any extra appliances in the properties. It's just not worth it. Um, you don't need money. You're not going to get rich trying to make money off your appliances. You're going to get rich renting the property. Let's say you're getting $1,000 a month for a three-bedroom. That's good enough. You don't have to add on $20 by leaving a washer and dryer in the basement that's going to be nothing but phone calls, hassles, and spending money. Don't do it. Take your thousand dollars and run, all right? Now let me talk about that other tip, and that's called elimination, all right? Now, when me and Nick take possession, when we buy a property, the first thing we'll do, we'll go around the property and look for things to eliminate that are gonna either break or fail us on our annual inspection. Now, we didn't just reach up and grab these things out of midair. No, everything that we eliminate from a property has bit us in the ass at least once or twice before where we've either gotten into arguments with our tenants about it or it has been broken and we fouled inspections on it, okay? Let's start with, this is the first thing I eliminate. If the property has, I'm gonna give you three today since I'm in a good mood and it's Monday, I'll give you three good things here to eliminate which will save you money, all right? The first thing would be a garbage disposal, all right? If you leave a garbage disposal that's hooked up in your property, the first thing a tenant's gonna do, they're gonna stop scraping their dishes into the garbage can. They're gonna start scraping them right into the sink. That means a, a steak bone, eggshells, anything that's on that plate is gonna go down into the garbage disposal. That's gonna jam up. The sink's gonna cl clog up. And next thing you know, you're gonna be calling a plumber to come out and free the garbage disposal and unclog the drain. Even though I make my tenants responsible for all the clogs, you're still gonna to have to put up with the argument of trying to explain to them why they are responsible for the clogging of the sink. So make sure you eliminate your garbage disposal if there is one in the property, all right? The next thing, ceiling fans. I don't care if I buy a property and it has six brand new ceiling fans spinning around all the bedrooms, the dining room, kitchen, whatever. I eliminate every ceiling fan before that tenant moves in and I'll replace it with a $9 Home Depot light. And I'll tell you why. The minute that ceiling fan stops working, again, the tenant's gonna call you. You're gonna go over there and try and replace it with a light and they're gonna say, no, 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 no. That ceiling fan was up and it's in the lease so I have to have another ceiling fan put up. Which is true because I already had this argument with a Section 8 inspector. 
So now instead of replacing a $9 light, let's say the light went bad, instead of replacing a $9 light, if a ceiling fan goes bad, you're replacing a $140 ceiling fan. Let's say you're not handy. You might have to hire a handyman or electrician to throw the ceiling fan up. Now you're out, say, $240, $250. So they're, it's just not worth it. Take them all down. I don't care if, you're, if they're brand new. Take them all. Get rid of them. Give them to your, your cousins, your friends, whatever. Get rid of them. Make sure they do not stay in your property. The last thing I'll talk about today is storm doors or screen doors. I don't care if it's a 200 hour forever door that's on the property. The minute I take possession of a property, I take that storm door right the hell off and I'll tell you why. The screens get ripped, the handles get ripped, the locks get ripped off and broken, the hinges get ripped off. Now you'll, you'll find a kid swinging on them back and forth until the, the storm door falls down. When the storm door falls down, two things are gonna happen. First, your tenant's gonna call you and tell you to come out and replace the storm door. You're gonna tell her no. She's gonna call section eight on you. Section eight's gonna come out and tell you to replace that storm door. So eliminate it before they move in and they'll never know it was there. And you'll continue to pass your inspections as if nothing ever happened, all right? So there are the three things that I would eliminate. Garbage disposal, ceiling fans, and screen doors. I'll talk more, and you know, every week or two, I'll throw out another thing that you can el to, you can eliminate in your Section 8 rental. All right, all right. Next week, I'm going to be talking about patching concrete blocks. Um, I've always used a, a product. It, it's kind of a hassle. My tools would get dirty. You'd have to wash the tools, everything. But this product works so easy. It's the cheapest, fastest, and easiest way to get your concrete blocks out front patched up. So let's say an inspector comes out and tells you you have to patch a block, you'll be done it in two minutes, all right? I'll talk about that next week. Not only will I talk about it, I'll take you out front to one of my properties and we will repair a crack. I'll show you just how easy and effective this stuff works. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you found it helpful, make sure you subscribe and share. Also, you can get over to my website, www.section8bible.com, and you can check out all my products there. Thanks for watching.